Hello and welcome to another video from uh, Game Club Tabletop. My name is Duncan and today I'm going to talk to you about um, a new project. It's going to be a short video, start of a series of videos, um, just looking at a new project I started to have the idea for and what I went about to try and put that into place. So hopefully it'll be interesting to people who are looking to get into a new project, maybe moving away from the kind of starter box into designing things from their um, that they want to do from the start. Um, so essentially I was inspired to do a medieval army um, by the wonderful battle reports that uh, are on the Seventh Sun channel with Martin. Um, and I wanted to get into medieval. Um, so the first thing I sort of had a look around at was what kind of armies might I want to build. And the other thing was um, what rules would I want to use with it. And there were sort of three main rules I looked at for this. Uh, the title will, will be a bit of a spoiler as to which one I finally went for. Um, I was looking at the Hail Caesar rule set, which you can amend to play War of the Roses. Uh, I was looking at the Nevermind the Bill Hooks and Lion Rampant. Now, they've all recently had second editions, um, but there was a big difference in cost. I like the sim simplicity of the Rampant series. I've got Lion, uh, Dragon Rampant already. Uh, which is a fantasy version. So in the end, I settled for Lion Rampant. And this is the uh, the book that I went with. Now, this meant also that I could do pretty much any medieval period that I wanted, any part of the medieval period I wanted, because I was torn between um, War of the Roses and um, Crusades. Both of which, like I say, Martin and Simpsons done wonderful videos about glorious armies, um, great painting, great basing. They're really immersive. The battles look fun um, using the Hail Caesar system. Um, but I just can decide. I like the idea of the asymmetry of the Crusades, where you've got a sort of heavily armoured knight class going up against the sort of lighter armoured, more mobile, um, hit and run kind of uh, army, with some bigger units as well, some heavier units as well. Um, as opposed to War of the Roses, where you've got much more equally um, matched armies with very similar types of unit in them. Um, but in the end, uh, the fact they were similar, um, and this was meant to be a small, cheap project, if you like, a smaller, cheaper project, um, meant that it was easier for me to amass two armies, one for me and one for my son to play. Um, and like I say, one of the reasons I went for Lion Rampant is the um, scope of it. It covers a lot of periods. It's also very um, flexible. So here, for example, if we just have a quick look at a unit page, here's mounted units. First one is the Elite Cavalry. Now, it's going to give you a basic set of points cost for that, which here is uh, six points um, for the Elites, and it's going to give you some attack stats. But then what's interesting with Rampant is you've got these upgrades. Now, this is going to let you then tailor this unit to be closer to a unit you actually want to use in battle. Um, so you'll be able to add points to it to make it more like the army you're using. So again, this gives you the, that ability to, to vary things. And this is the same with all the different units in it, whether it's the, um, the uh, mounted ones here or the shooting units. And then in the back as well, when you get to the back, and there's sort of some extra rules and scenarios and things. Um, there's some other stuff you can do to sort of change the units. Uh, here we go. Look. So we can add in chariots if we wanted to go a bit more ancients. Okay. Um, camels if we want to go off into the desert. And more importantly, I guess, is, is the kind of pikemen if we wanted to move it forward a little bit. Um, and again here, look, we've got hand gunners slingers if again if you're going back in time a bit more so it gives you a lot of uh, variability and it's, it's a very similar system if you did want to go a little bit different do some uh, kind of uh, king arthur and merlin this would work really well with the dragon rampant system where you, which will give you some ideas for magic and stuff but also maintain the history so essentially to try and keep this brief we settle on the rules it's line rampant it's also a very quick an interesting battle game, um, which we'll go into in more detail later. So we settled on our rules, and we settled on our period. The next thing I had to settle on was scale. Now, like I said, probably oh, destroy this with the book. From the little bits of scenery I put out, 
uh, which I've already started a bit of work on, um, you can see that I went for quite a small scale. So I did look at 28 mil because um, they're a lot of fun to paint. And um, sorry about the camera work. I'm not very good. Oh, I'm not just doing it over there. Right. Um, but price-wise, it was just too much for what I wanted to do, especially as I had to, like I say, try and come up with two forces um, to use. So I then looked at 15 mil. And to be honest, if I was torn between the two, price-wise, there wasn't a huge amount of difference between it. And uh, if, like I say, if, if cost wasn't an issue, I probably would have gone 28 mil. Um, so rather than 15 but I kind of want a decent amount of troops on the table for this one. Oh, sorry. I just can't get the camera to sit there. Oh. Right, I'm just going to have to hold it. Be right. So, um, in the end, I remembered I'd had some uh, some miniatures off a company called Pendraken, uh, who do 10 mil, and they do a massive range of 10 mil. So, essentially, um, I decided on 10 mil. Very affordable. I think these are about six pounds a bag. You either get 15 if you're looking at something like the um, mounted troops here, uh, or 30 in a bag for the infantry. So essentially what I've done is I've bought a bag of, I think they're the light. These are called hobblars or light infantry, as you can see. Um, and a bag of, where are you? Never find them when I want them. Yeah. Ah, they're in the box. No. Yeah, they're still in the box. Sorry about that. And a bag of um, knights. Get some of these out so you can see them. So these are the, the heavier cavalry. So you can see they're for 10 mil. There's quite a lot of detail on them. Lost focus there we go. Yep. And um, so that's the heavies. We also got the command pack. Says. No, that's the hobblears. That's the hobblears. These are the hobblears, the lighter ones. You can see the horses aren't armoured up. So again, a bit of light cow. To harangue, we've got... Here we go. I think these are the kings. We've got a couple of kings to go. And we've got the generals, unless they're the kings. They could be the kings. This hat is particularly large. So we get it in focus. There we go. Just to add into the cavalry to give us our leader units. Then we've got... One of the things that intrigued me to sort of drew me to this period is the start of the black powder stuff. So I've got a bag of hand gunners. Um, not leaving behind. The classic British weapon. We've got some bow. And then there we go, these ones. We got some pike, and we got two bags of different billmen, so bill hooks, which will make up the main body of our forces. And you know, bow and bill, bill and bow, make up the main body of a lot of um, one, one of the roses. But by adding the two different bags in, we're going to get some different armor types. We're going to get a few different poses. The only problem with 10 mil, not a lot of poses, not a lot of different models in the bags. Like I say, two bags of that, 60. We've got 30 pikes, 30 archers, we've got 30 hand gunners, then we've got 15 of each cavalry. So we've got a total of 30 cal, okay, to play with, as well as the generals to go with the cal. And then some pavise shields to go with the, the shooting units to add a bit of interest. 
And then this is a command unit, so you've got banner bearers, you've got, I think we went for drummers on this one, so I'm getting rid of the focus, so there is the drummer, and then a few little commanders to go with the foot units. So all in all, like I said, six pounds a bag, six to twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six, about about thirty-six, forty pounds worth of metal. We have two armies. So it'll be a matter of breaking these bags up and making units for each army. Now Dragon Rampant Lion Rampant. Both pretty similar actually. Cavalry, like this, are gonna be in units of six. Okay. Elite foot which we haven't really got anything you might class as elite, would be sixes, and uh, the rest of the foot would be twelves. Same with shooting units, would be twelves. Now, that's not going to work out quite exactly, but we can also treat them, it says in the rules, as strength twelve. So we can say they've got a strength of twelve and actually put less models out. And one way to do this, and again, if you really want to see someone who's very good at it, check out Seventh Sun's channel, um, is to multi-base. So the bases I've gone for are these, and in the next video I'll look at how we're going to put these forces together. Um, but essentially, I'm going to multi-base on these. So whether they're cavalry, archers, billmen, or pike, they're going to go to these in blocks that will represent the units. So here we've got the handgunners. You can see we'll be able to spread them out, put some of the shields out. Okay, and we won't, but we won't be putting 12 on. This will let us get more units out of each of the bags. Okay, we'll have to have a little play to see what looks good. So I'll probably do a few up ready for the next video, but that was it. So, you know, things to think about. Do you have a set of rules in mind or do you have a period in mind? If you have a period, what rules cover it? You know, what do you want? Do you want it really deep? Do you want it just quick and fun? Just want to give you the flavor of the period? Um, what other areas that you might want to look at are covered by the rules. For example, Hail Caesar covers a very big area. Line Rampant covers a really big area. So you can pick up the rules and they might let you do something else as well. So maybe you're going to do a bit of medieval and then you're going to do some ancients. Well, Hail Caesar's great. Um, I have played with Saxons and Normans with Line Rampant. I've got some 20 mil armies, which I'm multi-basing um, for use in it at the minute, redoing their basing, just to make it look a bit more interesting. And that, that works really well. So again, it covers a large area. Like I say, so easy to throw a little bit of magic in if you wanted to do some sort of post-Roman um, kind of King Arthur kind of stuff. Um, so you've decided on your rules. You've decided on your period. What kind of scale? Have you got a lot of room? Um, are you, have you picked rules that are for mass battles or for skirmish? If it's skirmish, maybe you can afford to go to a bigger scale because you don't need as many models or as much space. Um, if you don't have masses of space, maybe a smaller scale. And just go through, like I say, people like Pendraken, um, some of the others, if you want to go smaller, um, Heroic and Ross or Bacchus in 6 mil. Um, 15 mil is quite a lot about, depending on what period you're looking at. Uh, lots of different man man manufacturers like Peter Pig. Uh, even even if you do World War Two, you know, Battlefront and people who do uh, the Flames of War gear, uh, moderns as well. You know, there's lots of different manufacturers. Like I say, one of the bonuses is, as well as part of my project, I managed to pick up some scenery. This is just a few pounds of printed resin scenery off eBay. Uh, this is a, a covered well and dovecote, which allowed a bit of thing. The, the bridges, this wasn't a lot of money again, 3D printed. It just adds a bit of flavour. But again, because it's 10 mil, you can afford to buy scenery as well. And this scenery, hedge pack, this isn't all of the hedges that came in it. But essentially at the moment, that's it. I'll go more into it as we're talking about painting later on. But that's just a couple of different colour contrasts. And then I'll, I'll dry brush on some other colours. I don't know if I've got one of these that I started. I've got a bit, oh yeah, this is the one I got a bit further with. So I've just done some dry brushing over the top. And I think at 10 mil, that's that's you know, quite an effective looking hedge. And, um, you know, you'll be able to pick up, I picked up some other off wall bases. I picked up some of their 10 mil mini hammer buildings. So they'll just add that kind of village stroke hamlet look. So there we go. That's it. Things to think about when you're starting a new project really are rules, period, scale, and what you want out of it. And if you're building both sides of the army, you know, what that's going to look like and how it's going to behave. Um, you know, 
I know a lot of people are going to be betting some smaller scales. There's, there's a few bigger games coming out in the smaller scales like that. I mean, this is the start of the army because this is how much I kind of had to spend on it at the moment. But, you know, I'm going to want to add cannons. I'm going to add, want to add more units to this as we go along, some more different units. Um, maybe more knights, maybe some foot knights. So it's a good basis. Um, but like I say, the next video, we're going to do some other videos. So I'm going to do some on how we're going to put the armies together. Uh, maybe some quick painting tips. Not that I'm a brilliant painter, but um, to get them looking okay, to play games with quickly. You know, not everyone's into this hobby for the painting. Um, so sometimes just having a quick way of getting what you want onto the table so you can play the games is more important. So each video, hopefully won't be much, this is, I'm, I'm rambling again now, so this is getting longer than I really wanted it to. Um, but they'll be about this sort of length, so I'm not going to go on for too long about any particular section. Like I say, I'm no expert, but uh, I do like playing and I like getting stuff onto the table. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully you'll join me for the next video. Like I say, where we're going to look at constructing the armies and, and planning the units that we're going to use. Um, and I'll try and get better with this, this camera uh, before then. Thank you very much for joining me. Cheers. Bye.